Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. I am the deacon of the day, Pat Summerer, along with Robin Long and Nick Davis. Um, I have some announcements. The council voted uh, for, uh, we're staying with CDC guidelines right now. They are medium, so masks are still optional. Um, anyone joining on Facebook Live, you're encouraged to participate through the chat function. Uh, we're not able to do Zoom right now. As you can see, we're still having technical problems and trying to get all of these iPads going at once. Our choir practices at 9.15 on Sunday mornings. All are welcome to join us. We could always use some more voices. Once again, we're providing gifts for families served by the Emmaus Shelter. Gift tags are hanging on the tree in the Fellowship Hall and they detail the first name, age, and gender of the recipient along with their hoped for Christmas present. And sometimes it's a warm blanket. So please grab one of those and bring the gift back unwrapped with its tag on it so they know which child it's going to. Uh, and we would like those back before Sunday, December 11th, which is next Sunday. So grab a tag today and, uh, and get those back by next Sunday, please. <laughs> Christmas points at yes, orders can be phoned or emailed to Vicki on or before next Sunday. Cost is $10 per plant. Please indicate in memory of or in honor of if you wish that put in a bulletin. The Ellsworth Holiday Parade is postponed until today, so it's today at four o'clock. Uh, Pastor TJ and Ellsworth Pride will be lining up at the Ellsworth Elementary Middle School at uh, 3.30 if you'd like to participate in the parade. There are participants from the Grand in, for the show I'm in as well. It should be a fun parade. Uh, look for the rainbow lanterns for the Ellsworth Pride, or just turn out and enjoy the parade. Tonight is the potluck and carol sing. The potluck is at 5 to 6 p.m. and the carol sing from 6 to 7. Um, so bring a dish, come eat, converse with everyone, and then have some lovely singing time. Uh, volunteers are needed to set up and clean up. I think the sign up is out there and it looks pretty good, so maybe we're good on that. But be sure and come and attend and bring your food. Unfortunately, I can't. <laughs> there are lots of board meetings going on. Board of Trustees will meet uh, December 5th. That's tomorrow at noon. Board of Outreach, Thursday, December 8th at 4. The Finance and Investment Committee is meeting Friday at 10 a.m. And the deacons are meeting Friday at 2 p.m. So a big week for meetings. The wreaths across America, it's that time of year. They're passing by our church at approximately 8.45 a.m. next Sunday. Join Pastor TJ and Deacon, Deacon David Wilds on the front steps of the church to show our support for this exceptional effort. They, we are usually their first stop. They stop here and give us a wreath, and it's just wonderful to be part of that. I know it's 8.45 in the morning, but if any of you can come and be on the steps, it's, it's very nice. Wednesday, December 14th, is Blue Christmas service at 7 p.m. Blue Christmas is a service that honors people who are experiencing grief and melancholy, as many of us are this time of year. Um, I have one more announcement. The concert for the Acadia Choral Society went very well here yesterday in spite of the rain and wind and horrible weather. Uh, we, we had a pretty good turnout. If you were unable to make that concert, they are singing again today at 3 o'clock in uh, Bar Harbor at St. Savior's Church and next Sunday at 3 o'clock at the Ellsworth Congregational Church. So that's a new venue for them and uh, it was a wonderful concert. The musicians five string players and a oboe and trumpet and a pipe organ that Daniel plays. It's his own personal little pipe organ, which is amazing. Well worth um, your, your effort to get out there. Are there any announcements from people in the sanctuary or I don't even have an online for anybody to tell me if anybody online is an announcement. We don't see anything. Mm -hmm. Any announcements out there? 
There's one. Uh, there's a question. Yes. You said there was, uh, I know the trustees were meeting by Zoom tomorrow. That's correct. They're, so they're at Zoom on Zoom. Yes. So the Zoom probably be working for that? Yes. Okay. All right. So that is a Zoom meeting. That's a Zoom meeting. I'm sorry. Yes. It says right here, Zoom. <laughs> I do believe it. Birthdays. Today is Gary Edwards' birthday. Happy birthday, Gary. And tomorrow is Sonny Mayo. Sonny. So I uh, want to wish them happy birthdays. Let us center ourselves and prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Reverend T.J. Mack, who had the Union Congregation of Church of Hancock, an open and affirming denomination, United Church of Christ. You are welcome here no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter who you are, no matter who you love, no matter where you live, no matter how often you attend our services or our events, no matter how you attend our services or events, no matter who you are or where you are in life's journey, you are welcome here. And I hope and pray that you feel welcome here. Please stand in body or spirit and join in singing our intro. Arise, your light is come. Then you're born. Because of war, because of violence in our communities, because there is still so much unrest in our hearts, we light a candle of peace. Because hatred is still so strong, because so many thoughts have not yet been remade into plowshares, we light a candle of peace. May the light from this candle go around the world. May the light from this candle say to all that God's peace is coming on earth as it is already in heaven. Friends, be not afraid. God's peace is at hand. Please join me in passing the peace using American Sign Language. Peace be with as Robin lights our peace candle, we have a simple verse from Matthew, chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Please remain standing. We'll sing O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, verses 1, 2, 6, and 7 from our black hymnal, number 116.
us recite the invocation together. Your word, holy God, was written for our instruction. By your Holy Spirit, open our ears and fill us with the mysteries of your ancient love. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Please be seated. and anybody. We're all children at heart. If you would like to come forward for the children's message, you are more than welcome. We'll, we'll sit just off to the side here. So come right over here, Abigail. We'll sit on the steps. Let's go. Let's go up here a little further. Okay. Let's face this way. <laughs> that was a nice how many point turn. So Abigail, Advent is a season of preparing and waiting. Oh, that's your book you were drawing on that day. Yeah, that's sweet. You sure that? Oh man. So animals know how to prepare and wait. And each week of Advent, we're reading from this book called All Creation Waits, written by Gail Boss and illustrated by David Klein. So, Abigail, I'm going to let you choose what animal we read about this week. Do you want to read about a cottontail rabbit, or a loon, a bird loon, or a frog, or a raccoon? Or a little brown bat, or a painted turtle. Painted turtle. Painted turtle. Okay. If my mom she she gave me and my grandpa some a turtle. Really? Yes. You have a great mom. <laughs> so painted turtle. How does the painted turtle wait? So here's a story. Patience. The day is bright and warm for December, but the logs in the marsh pond are bare. Spring to summer into the early fall they serve, on sunny days as spa to a dozen or so painted turtle. I would see them basking, splay-legged, splay stretching their leathery necks out full length, avid for every luscious atom of sunlight and sun warmth. Out of sight now, They've not escaped the harsher cold, <clears throat> cold that's coming. The water is maybe waist deep in this pond, but a murky soup clogged with roots and plants. One day in the fall, as water and air cooled at some precise temperature, an ancient bell sounded in the turtle brain. A signal, take a deep breath. Each creature slipped off her log and swam for the warmer muck bottom. Stroking her way through the woven walls of plant stems, she found her bottom place. She closed her eyes and dug into the mud. She buried herself. And then, pulled into her shell, encased in darkness, she settled into a deep stillness. Her heart slowed and slowed, almost to stopping. Her body temperature dropped and stopped just short of freezing. Now, beneath a layer of mud, beneath the weight of frigid water and its skin of ice and skim of snow, everything in her has gone so still she doesn't need to breathe. And anyway, the iced over pond will soon be empty of oxygen. Sunk in its bottom mud, for six months she will not draw air into her lungs. To survive a cold that will kill her, or slow her so that predators will kill her. She slows herself beyond breath in a place where breath is not possible. And waits. As ice locks in the marsh water and howling squalls batter its reeds and brush, beneath it all she waits. It is her one work, and it is not easy. Oxygen depletion stresses every particle of her. Lactic acid pools in her bloodstream. Her muscles begin to burn. 
her heart muscle too, a deadly sign. That acid has to be neutralized, and calcium is the element to do it. Out of her bones, then out of her shell, her body pulls calcium, slowly dissolving her structure, her shape, her strength. But to move to escape, requiring breath, in a place where there is no oxygen, that would suffocate her. So though she is dissolving, every stressed particle of her stays focused on the silver beam of utter quietude. It's this radical simplicity that will save her. And deep within it, at the heart of her stillness, something she has no need to name, but something we might call trust, that one day, yes, the world will warm again, and with it, her life. Annabelle's drawing a beautiful picture of what we just read. Thank you, Annabelle. So, Annabelle, we're going to just have a prayer now about trust and waiting. And thank you, God, for the seasons and for the way everything just works out if we wait and are patient and stay in sync with the universe. Thank you for teaching us this through Jesus. Amen. Debbie, are you going to be playing the piano? Yeah. Okay. Testament reading today is from Isaiah chapter 11 verses 1 through 10 and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version updated edition. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with the righteousness he shall judge for the poor and decide with equity for the oppressed of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with his breath with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie with the kid, the calf and the lion will feed together, and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy all, on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The New Testament reading is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. In those days, John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness of Judea, proclaiming, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is the one of whom the prophet Isaiah spoke when he said, The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now John wore clothing of camel hair with a leather belt around his waist, and his food was locusts and wild honey. 
Then Jerusalem and all Judea and all the region around the Jordan were going out to him, and they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming for his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore bear fruit worthy of repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. Even now the axe is lying at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is more powerful than I, and I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and will gather his wheat into the granary, but the shaft he will burn with unquenchable fire. Thus ending ends our reading for today.
just pray with me. Oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. At the recommendation on Facebook of one of my friends from seminary, I watched the movie Spirited the other night. The musical is a modernization of Charles Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol. This was part of my friend's thoughtful assessment of the movie. Ryan Reynolds is the new Scrooge. In his work, he intentionally divides people and companies and groups in order to promote his clients for profit. He uses marketing and social media, and he manipulates people with incredible ease. It struck me, watching him plan his manipulations, just how susceptible we are to people like him. We live in a challenging environment with lots of people and companies competing for our attention, consistently attempting to manipulate our thoughts, intentions, feelings, self-image, and actions. Today, in moving through Advent, she wrote, I'd like to be increasingly selective regarding whose message I'm listening to and for. Today, we heard messages from the prophets Isaiah and John. Where are their words leading us this week? Isaiah describes a righteous leader that springs forth from the family tree of Jesse that will come to herald the new, peaceable kingdom of God. This ruler will bring peace as we have never known it, justice to the oppressed and security for those without food or shelter. This ruler will honor the dignity and worth of all people, all creatures, all the universe. This prophecy from the book of Isaiah envisions that when we achieve this peace on earth, even wild creatures, predators, and prey will live together without conflict, a heaven on earth. The writer of the Gospel of Matthew and scholars over the centuries have pointed back to this, claiming certainty that Jesus came in fulfillment of this prophecy of Isaiah. The author of Matthew also reads John the Baptist into another of Isaiah's prophecies, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. John comes in advance of Jesus to make things ready. A good scriptural segue to Advent, making ready for the coming of the Christ child. John was different. We learn from reading scriptures that he was a wild man. He wore animal skins and he ate what he could forage with his hands. Over the centuries, some have tried to paint the picture that John the Baptist was bordering on mental instability. Likely, those were his detractors, those attempting to silence his message, such as the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They must have had a difficult time understanding his choices, foregoing companionship and status and comfort for wilderness and self-reflection. I wonder, though, if he wasn't choosing the better path. Rejecting the hypocrisy and the pretense of the power systems and choosing the honesty and simplicity of living close to nature, living close to God. Of course, that is framing it as either or, and life is rarely, if ever, that simple. Now more than ever, we view our choices through the lens of both and, and we are richly rewarded. John recognized the plight of the commoners. They were overlooked in society. They were marginalized by the rich and powerful. He was making space for them, accepting them as they were, and offering them hope for a better tomorrow. And so, John expressed anger and outrage when the elite, the powerful, showed up at the river to be baptized, asking for a piece of this action. To John and to Matthew, it was either or. Either you give up your riches, your status, your power to raise the poor up with you, or you have no part with them. You have to bear good fruit. The fruits of the Spirit 
love and joy and peace and faithfulness and gentleness. John baptizes them, but reluctantly. He warns them of the one to come that will baptize with Holy Spirit and fire. God will not be fooled, he tells the Pharisees and the Sadducees. I will baptize you with water. But if your hearts are impure, they will be winnowed, chopped, thrown into the unquenchable fire. And then along comes Jesus, God in human form. And yes, Matthew tells us that he comes to separate the wheat from the chaff. In this context, it is easy to think that Jesus is separating people, classes of people, good people from bad people. That is how I have most often heard this preached and heard this in my own mind. Literal fire and brimstone preaching. And I can tell you that it created in me great discomfort. I believe we hear the scriptures best when grounding them in love. I believe we hear them best when they are inclusive rather than divisive. I believe we hear them best when we approach them with humility, with openness, with curiosity. It is good to come to the scriptures each week with new eyes to see and new ears to hear, to ponder not only what the scriptures meant to us decades ago, but what they mean to us now. How do I hear this today? With the help of Matthew Meyer Bolton of the SALT Project, I hear inclusion rather than exclusion when I read the verses about separating the wheat from the chaff. The metaphor of separating the wheat from the chaff does not need to mean separating the sheep from the goats, separating the haves and the have-nots, separating the sacred from the secular. Here the metaphor is it applies to each one of us individually. I need to purify. I suspect you do too. We need to separate our own wheat from our own chaff. God will gather us in, all of us, the grains of wheat. The separation involves the parts of us that we need to let go. Let go of our anxieties, our self-absorption, our apathy. Let go of our chaff. Let it burn away. Let the fire purify us. Matthew Meyer Bolton of That Salt Project writes, As we prepare for this new era of Shalom, John challenges us to change our hearts, minds, and lives. For the days of peace have come near. Make way, remove the obstacles, the husks that get in the way. Bear fruit, the Prince of Peace approaches. So I invite you to revisit A Christmas Carol. Go see the live show at the Grand in Ellsworth with the added bonus of seeing Pat Summerer and Amelia and Lucy Ashmore on stage. Or watch the new adaptation of Spirit. And here's the thing, don't simply be a passive viewer. Project yourself into the starring role of Ebenezer Scrooge. <laughs> Imagine your life being examined. Spend some time contemplating. What do your personal ghosts of Christmas, past, present, and future, have to teach you? will rise and by your spirit and sing, Now Bless the God of Israel, from our black hymnal number 110. <clears throat>
us quiet our minds and open our hearts to the love of God and allow that love to move freely through us, to hold us, to hold our joys, our concerns, our hopes, and our fears. Our God is ever-present. Our God is always listening. I'll open with a prayer from, from Kathy online. Please continue to pray for Patty and her family. Patty, Kathy's sister. Had a joy of my own. I have a new grandniece born this week, Olivia Marie. So the family is growing. I, we have other prayers to share. Nick. Mary Angel and I have a joy. Um, it's a really long story to explain it, so I won't try. But um, we have a Bosnian granddaughter who is 20 today, and she lives in, well, she's living in Phoenix with her other family. Um, but just the fact that she's alive and she's 20, uh, when her mother was driven from her town because of uh, genocide attempts, and um, she made it to America and lived with us, and um, it's just, it's a miracle of peace, and we, we rejoice with her and her whole family. And, um, we rejoice with you, yeah. yeah. I'm gonna keep the joy coming, and <clears throat> our son Palmer and his partner have shared with us that we will be grandparents oh. in late spring. prayers. Um, Roberta and her family asked that we just raise her up. She's spent a couple days in the hospital. She's home again, having some heart issues. Um, so just keep her in your prayers. Give her a call. <coughs> I was surprised when I called her last night and she was the one that answered the phone. So uh -huh. she's, she's back to pretty good. Prayers for Ginger and John Cunningham, an old connection that was made this week. Ginger is in the hospital. Prayers for Betty J and for her stepdaughter Molly. Prayers for Margaret B. For Christopher's stepfather Arthur. For Debbie, not able to join us this morning in the choir. For Edwin, who's waiting some surgery in Boston. And prayers for Coulter. Prayers for Richard Bellows in, uh, in Chicago. His daughter Beth is with him and hospice is surrounding them. Prayers continue for Steve and Marsha. And for Pat and Ed. And for Kenny and Joy and David. For Steve and for Myrna, and for Liz and for Jim, and for Tamara and Andrew, and for Austin, Austin's cousin Dan. Prayers for Gary, joys on his birthday, and prayers for improving health. Prayers for Bruce's sister Lynn, for David's brother Stephen, who's recovering from orthoscopic knee surgery this week. Prayers for Renata and the women she cares for. And for Elmer's stepdaughter, Holly. For Tom and Judy's son, Andrew, and his family. And for Kathy and Patty's lifelong friend, Kathy. From online, from Gina. For the surgeons who will replace Jamie's knee again, our gratitude and prayers for success. Prayers for for that, Gina and Jamie. Prayers for Cynthia and Nancy. Prayers for all individuals and families experiencing addictions, for all caregivers, for all affected by memory loss, 
Whereas for those living with depression and other mental health issues. And prayers for peace. So many areas of the world. Prayers for peace beginning in each one of us individually and expanding our faith. And we offer now a few moments of silence for your own intentions. We come to you this day, O oh God, with a deepening anticipation of your birth among us. We thank you for the gift of your love. We pray for the church throughout the world and for all the ministries that build up the body of Christ, that in our many vocations we may serve to your glory. We pray for this nation and for all nations, remembering especially those who are victims of political and social injustice. We pray for elected officials and all leaders that they will govern with courage and equity. We remember with mercy those who sleep without shelter, cold and vulnerable, lacking enough food, those who are overworked, and those who have no work. Stir up in us the capacity to see ourselves in their struggles and to act so that others may have life abundant. Hear these prayers spoken in silence, and hear this prayer as we join our voices together and pray the words that Jesus taught to his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory.
he that built us up in faith and bound us together in love. By your grace, may all that you do show the glory of your name and serve the good of your people. Amen. Please join in singing, I Come With Joy, in our red hymnal number 313. Come to this table, for you are welcomed by a star that guides even those who feel lost, even those who feel distant from the oasis of church, and those who need someone to receive their gifts. Come to this table, for you are welcomed by an innkeeper who recognizes that no room always means finding another kind of space and who can do magic with life's leftovers to feed hungry, tired shepherds. Come to this table, for you are welcomed by a manger, friendly beasts in the story, cow, dove, donkey, lambs, any holy memory of a companion animal you've known. And on the Advent journey, we remember the family saying, yes, Mary, who would feed the child of God as we are fed by this sacrament, and Joseph, who loved her, and built tables like this one for a whole town. On the Advent journey, we remember Elizabeth, who sheltered Mary in a time of rejection, and Zechariah, who learned silence as they carried their own God-given child. We let communion nurture our hope and teach us love. On the Advent journey, we remember the Magnificat, how Jesus lived that song in ministry and the indiscriminate love of the Passover bread and cup for all. Word of faith, flesh, and gift divine, who offers us hope, peace, joy, and love all the year long, we pray for your spirit of starlight and gloria upon these gifts which are ours and yours, even as our lives are yours and ours, today and always. 
this gift is more precious than gold. Eat this bread and be rich inside. Amen. Amen. This gift is poured out like myrrh. Drink this cup and know you are precious in God's sight. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come for all things are ready. <laughs>
God. We give thanks for your messages that heal like angels, care that is like a shepherd, and joy to the world we gather around this table in this season of waiting. Strengthened by this meal, may we notice and care for all of our rejected and unannounced, fleeing from the rise of danger without a doubt As we go forth, O oh Holy One, may it be truly by another way. And now may the holy triune God guide your feet, strengthen your hands, and fortify your heart this day and evermore in the name of the Creator, Sustainer, and Redeemer God. Amen. Amen. Amen.